it is now time to bring it all together. That is, all the security solutions we have learned to so far. This lesson will help you in understanding cybersecurity in 360 degree angle. It will also give you some insights into how a cybersecurity manager or a CISO thinks about cybersecurity. More importantly, it will help you in crafting matured answers during interviews since you will be having a 360 degree view on the domain. To make this module more effective, imagine this. You have got a new job and have been appointed as a security manager for a company. You are a first time manager. The company has very little in terms of cyber security, like they have got antivirus, firewall and that's all. The company's vision is to build world class cyber security practices. How will you approach implementing various cybersecurity solutions and practices in such company? Cybersecurity is vast. What will you prioritize? Would you focus on endpoint security or network security? Would you do application security first or would you be worried about identity and access management? Would you focus on user awareness programs or implement a SOC team? Does the company need a vulnerability management right now? And do you or should you draft a security best practices at this point in time? There are various challenges that you will encounter when implementing cybersecurity practices in a company from scratch. The worst part is, at the end of doing so many things, you will still not be sure if you have done enough to secure the network and the users. To address these challenges, industry developed cybersecurity frameworks. A cybersecurity framework provides a common language and a set of standards for security leaders to implement controls to protect their digital assets and understand their security postures. With a framework in place, it becomes much easier to define the processes and procedures that your organizations must take to assess monitor and mitigate cybersecurity risk. Popular frameworks include ISO 27001, NIST 853, COBIT, etc. Most of these frameworks are comprehensive and have an excellent coverage of wide area of cybersecurity. But understanding and implementing could be overwhelming and could take a long time. However, there is another framework which is pretty straightforward and easy to follow and implement. That is CIS Critical Controls. CIS framework is best suited for companies that have little to no cybersecurity practices. Let me put up a disclaimer here. I am not saying that the CIS is the best amongst all the frameworks. I am just saying it is best for companies with early stage of cybersecurity practices as it is easy to understand and implement. CIS stands for Center for Internet Security. It is a non-profit organization. They define and update the CIS critical controls, which is a list of cybersecurity best practices to improve cyber defense. These controls break down the complex challenges into simple list. Implementing these practices, you as a manager can be assured that you have done what is possible to secure the company. It gives you a sense of completeness. At this point, let me bring up another disclaimer. There are few cybersecurity professionals that do not agree with the checklist approach to solving cybersecurity problems and I strongly agree that cybersecurity problems need a more holistic approach. But here we are talking about companies whose cybersecurity practices are in infant stages and I believe CIS control is a good way to start. The latest version of CIS is version 8 proposed in May of 2021. It has a total of 18 controls and 56 safeguards. We will look into what these controls and safeguards are in a minute. 
CIS also defines what level of companies should apply what kind of safeguards. CIS calls them implementation groups. IG1, that is implementation group 1, is a company that has limited IT and cybersecurity resources. Typically, a small to medium sized company with less than 1000 employees. IG2 is a company that has individuals responsible for managing and protecting IT infrastructure. Usually a mid-sized company with say 3,000 to 5,000 employees. IG3 is an organization that employs security experts that specialize in the different facets of cybersecurity. Typically, large enterprises fall under IG3 with employee count of more than 10,000. It is now time to look at the 18 controls of the CIS framework. The first control is inventory and control of enterprise assets. It makes sense, right? If you want to secure anything, first of all, you have to know what you are protecting. So it becomes necessary to actively manage all enterprise assets like end user devices, including portable and mobile devices, network devices, IoT devices, servers, etc. There are five safeguards defined within first control which highlight maintaining an inventory, addressing unauthorized assets, using active and passive discovery tools, and the use of DHCP. The second control talks about maintaining an inventory of software assets, which includes operating systems and applications. It has seven safeguards that talks about listing down authorized applications and prevent of unauthorized applications from installing and running in the network. The third control is all about data protection. This becomes very important for companies that store sensitive data like user information, credit card information or patient records. There are a total of 14 safeguards defined in this control which covers developing a process and technical controls to identify, classify, securely handle, retain and dispose of data. Example, use of encryption, deploying DLP solution and logging access to sensitive data. The fourth control is about secure configuration of hardware and software. It has 12 safeguards that stress on establishing and maintaining secure configuration processes for network devices, softwares, servers, firewalls, end user devices, etc. It also talks about hardening the operating systems by disabling unnecessary services and ports. The fifth control is account management. It has six safeguards that talks about maintaining a list of accounts, using unique and complex passwords, disabling dormant that is unused accounts and having a list of service accounts. If the fifth control is all about identity, then the sixth control focuses on access and authorization. It has eight safeguards that talks about having an access granting and revoking process, using multi-factor authentication and having a centralized access control server. We are now discussing the seventh control, which is continuous vulnerability management. Now this one is a no-brainer. In the past lesson, we have learned the vulnerabilities exist in operating system applications and configurations. These vulnerabilities have to be identified and patched on a regular basis. There are seven safeguards in the control that highlight the vulnerability management lifecycle. The eighth control talks about audit log management. This control directly relates to SOC team as we are the ones who deal with logs. It has 12 safeguards which focuses on having a process collecting logs from all important servers and security solutions, centrally collect all the logs in one place and also defines retaining the logs for a certain period of time. Ninth control speaks about email and web browser protection. This control has seven safeguards that highlight using supported browsers and email clients, use of internal DNS server, implementing DMARC and have antivirus check done at email gateway and web gateways. The tenth control is malware defense. It goes without saying that any company should implement strong defense against malware attacks. 
This control has seven safeguards that explains use of anti-malware software and keeping it up to date with latest signatures, restricting files from running from removal media, using endpoint platform to centrally manage all AV deployments, etc. Eleventh control is data recovery. In times when ransomware attacks are everyday news, it becomes highly necessary for a company to have a data recovery capabilities. This control has five safeguards which talk about establishing a process for data recovery, having an automated backup, protecting the backup itself, and regularly testing the backed up data. Twelfth control is network infrastructure and management. It has eight safeguards that focuses on keeping the infrastructure up to date, maintain network architecture diagrams, using AAA, use of secure protocols, using VPNs and maintaining separate computing resources for all administrative work. Thirteenth control defines network monitoring and defense. It has 11 safeguards that highlight use of HIPS, NIPS, collecting traffic logs and flows, and perform application level filtering. Fourteenth control is security awareness and skill training. It has nine safeguards that talk about educating end users to recognize social engineering attacks, handling data, reporting security incidents, etc. Fifteenth control is service provider management. In the current world, outsourcing part of the company's operations or services is a common thing. When a company decides to outsource any of its services, it has to do a thorough third-party risk assessment. This control has seven safeguards and talks about maintaining a list of service providers, ensuring they have just enough access on the enterprise assets, monitoring the activities of service providers and securely removing a service provider after the contract ends. Sixteenth control talks about application security. This applies to companies that are either developing products for customers or companies that are developing homegrown applications. There are 14 safeguards defined in this control which mainly focus on preventing the attacks at the application layer by implementing security practices into software development lifecycle. Seventeenth control is incident response, another control that the SOC team is closely associated with. It has nine safeguards which define assigning designated people to handle incidents, establishing communication matrix, maintaining an IR process, and conduct post-incident reviews. Eighteenth and the final control talks about penetration testing. It has five safeguards that highlight establishing a pen test program, performing periodic external penetration testings, remediate identified vulnerabilities, and validate security measures. In order to refer back quickly for revision, the following two images are added to the course notes.